Jerusalem shortly. We have the power transfer, and we're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. Final reports coming from Frank Bowen at this time. Final look at the switch list aboard the spacecraft. 20 seconds, all aspects, we are still going at this time. 15, 15, 14, 15, 15, 12, 11. miles per hour, Neil Armstrong notices his checkpoints are all appearing too soon. This means a serious navigation error. At these speeds, three seconds long means missing the safe landing zone by three miles. Armstrong ignores his computer navigation and veers away from the rocky landing site with no time to explain to Mission Control. Okay, I'll fly the taller than that. In Mission Control, everybody is stunned. At 300 feet, the Eagle has left its flight plan and taken off at full speed across the face of the moon. Eagle, Houston, is detected. Fuel, Ninety seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. They call this part of the flight plan, Dead Man's Curve. I'm down to two men and one minute. Forward. Forward. Forty feet down, two and a half. I'm back. 
A short time later, history is made again. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. For one incredible moment, we are one people with one history, watching our destiny unfold. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was a moment shared by an entire world. Airman from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, became a for all mankind. With these first steps, mankind stood on the highest ground, and we saw our planet as our home port in the endless ocean of space. There was something which was surprising to me that occurred as I was standing on the surface. Just after we had landed, I'd gone down standing on the surface and looking at planet Earth for the first time, uh, seeing the beauty, seeing the, the finiteness of it, the, the limits of it, uh, and realizing what a shame it was that people were confronting each other on that planet without realizing what it was doing to the planet. It was a very emotional moment for me. I actually shed a couple of tears. Uh, something totally unexpected for, a, for an engineer and fighter pilot to be, to be crying up, quietly up there on the moon. The future of space travel is being written right now in the dreams and imaginations of a new generation. Perhaps that's the greatest legacy of Apollo. It shows our children and grandchildren courage, imagination, Will to explore, no dream is impossible. Charlie. We never worried about getting lost on the moon because as you drove your car, you left your tracks, as you, you walked, you left your tracks. So you just have to do a new turn and follow your tracks back to get back to the lunar margin. The surface was actually pulverized rock, but it was very, very fine like powder. But it had good bearing strength, so you never sank in more than just an inch or so. Uh, and you felt very secure as you hopped around the moon, as you uh, 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 jogged, if you will. Uh, there were sort of three ways that I got used to. If, you, if the surface was flat, you just sort of throw your feet out like this and stiff legged, like Frankenstein running, if you will. Uh, the other, going up the hill, it was more like a bunny hop. Uh, going down the hill, it was more a skip down. But everybody had their own techniques of how they walked and ran and stuff on the moon. <laughs> 